You can't really appreciate your vision without breaking it down into parts. And like most things, when everything is working correctly, you don't really notice it. You may not even realize how many systems are running in parallel to help you perceive the world. So let's throw it all out the window and build it back up from nothing. We'll start this off by talking about the most obvious form of blindness. Total and complete blindness. This is usually caused by having damaged eyes or optic nerves, either physically from an accident or injury, developmentally, or from a disease. So what do you see when you're blind? Nothing. Not black, not darkness, just nothing. Tommy Edison has been vlogging and answering questions about what it's like to be blind for years. They always want to know, what do you see? What, like, you must see something. You have to see something. No, I don't see anything. That's a five hour conversation. And in the comments, constantly, people try to tell him that he sees black, as if they somehow know better than he does. Sighted people often talk about seeing, like, well, then you must see black. Well, no, because you have to see to know what black is, right? So, therefore, I can't see black. It's just nothing. He's been blind since birth, so he has no reference point for white or black or any other color, or even what lightness or darkness is. He sees nothing. And I understand why that would be confusing for a sighted person, because when you close your eyes, you see darkness or blackness or residual opposing color. Doesn't matter, I'm getting ahead of myself. You, you see stuff, you know what I mean. But as we've discussed previously, when you close one eye, you don't see half black. Your brain shuts off all incoming information from that eye, so you see this. For a quick demonstration, close one eye, then cover that eye, and open your eye when you start to read the second line of the text on screen. You should see a huge difference, and if you don't, try again or something. The point is that what your brain does to that one eye when it's not in use is what Tommy's brain does to both eyes. He sees nothing because his brain is receiving and processing no information. You kind of experience this when you're daydreaming and you're not really paying attention to what you're seeing. Like when you're drifting off to sleep or Driving. If I went up to a blind person and I asked, how many fingers am I holding up? I'm blind. Yeah, I know, but could you just take a guess? By pure chance alone, they will get it right 20% of the time. What is wrong with you guys? But if I went up to a blind person and asked, what color shirt am I wearing? I'm still blind. Yes, I... We've been through this already. Can you just take a guess, please? They will understandably almost never get it right because there's an almost infinite amount of colors. But there is a form of blindness where they'll get it right almost always. It's called cortical blindness, and it's when the eyes and optic nerve are completely intact and functional, but the visual cortex, also known as area V1, is damaged either from accident or injury or a stroke or a neurodegenerative disease. The point is that it's always acquired later in life. You're not born with it. People with cortical blindness cannot consciously see, and if you ask them, they will tell you that they're blind, and for all practical purposes, they are. But if I were to do something like, just like you just did, they'll flinch, which is strange, right? Although it's a little stranger for you because you're watching a video, but let's not split hairs. How can someone who is blind still see and react to stimulus, but not see? Well, oddly enough, it's called blind sight, and it's caused by the fact that your occipital lobe is not the only part of your brain that processes vision. In fact, it's also not even the first part of the brain. The optic nerve first travels through the subcortical structures, more specifically the thalamus, and even more specifically the lateral geniculate nucleus, or LGN. And this processes basic visual information before it ever gets to your visual cortex or conscious awareness. This is why you flinch a split second before you even realize that something is flying at your face. If you ask someone with blindsight why they flinched, they won't be able to give you an answer. Their brain will make something up to explain their actions. I just felt like something was coming. But it's because they can see, at least basic things. They can correctly guess colors, orientation of objects, direction of movement, and even facial expressions such as happy or angry. Almost always, like well over chance. If you're not impressed yet, here's a guy who is cortically blind. He will tell you that he's blind, and he definitely is blind. But here he is walking through a hallway that he's never been down before, avoiding obstacles and objects without touching them. I know what you're thinking. This is some real daredevil shit. But it's not, because Ben Affleck's eyes were damaged, not his visual cortex. So let's turn the visual cortex back on and talk about an interesting disorder known as Balintz syndrome. There are three parts to Balintz. First is apraxia, which is the inability to voluntarily focus or fixate your eyes. Now when I first say that, you might think that it looks something like this. Ugh. But no, it actually looks something like this. Look at the keys, please. I am. Would you, would you like to try again? 
They can't point their eyes at anything that they want to. They can shift their attention, which is different, but you already know that. You are able to focus and watch one thing, but pay attention to another. But that's what they are always doing. But they don't know it. They think that they're looking at it. The second is ataxia, which is the inability to guide your hand to something using only visual information. Reach out and grab the keys, please. Would you, would you like to try again? It's not a depth perception issue because they'll be too far forward, too far back, left, right. They'll be all over the place. And I'm not just picking fun. While patients can see the object, they can name the object, they just can't interact with or properly attend to it. And that's the thing. It's an attention issue, not a visual issue. They're receiving all of the information, but they're not processing it correctly. Which brings us to the third part. Simultagnosia. You've probably heard the saying, can't see the forest through the trees. Well, someone with balance and simultagnosia can only see one tree at a time, and they're incapable of perceiving the entire forest. So basically, they can only attend to one object at a time. What does that mean? It means that if I'm holding up my keys, they can either see me or my keys, but not both, and certainly not everything else. Again, they're receiving all of the information, but they can only attend to one thing at a time. The opposite of this is visual agnosia, when you can see an object, but you just can't recognize or identify it. The form of this that you're probably most familiar with is prosopagnosia, or face blindness, which I've discussed before. But more generally, there are two types. Aperceptive, which is when I hold up an object and ask you to identify it, but this is not aphasia where you forget the name of the object. You simply perceive it as a colorful shape. It has no meaning as an object itself. But you just can't. You can describe it. It's a black bar with some teeth, but you can't name it. And associative, which is when you can name it, but you have no idea what the meaning or purpose of the object is. It's a comb. Right, what's it used for? Uh, it's, it's when, uh... The interesting thing is, this only affects vision, and if the patient holds the object, they immediately know what it's for. Oh, yeah. But taking this to the extreme, we have visual neglect. This is when sensation and perception work just fine, but the ability to attend to any of it just isn't there. This usually only occurs in half- Whoa, whoa, wait, okay, go back. When you were a kid, you were told that your left eye connects to your right hemisphere, and your right eye connects to your left hemisphere. Yeah, well, you were also told that Santa and the Tooth Fairy were real, and that good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people, and if you keep making that face, it'll stick that way. The truth is much more complicated. It's not the eyes that cross over, it's the visual fields. So the entirety of your left visual field connects to your right hemisphere, and vice versa, and yes, it's also upside down. It's upside down for the same reason everything is upside down when you look into a spoon. Everything gets inverted, but let's not overcomplicate this. So anyway, how do visual fields work? The left side of your left eye connects to your right hemisphere. This is called contralateral, and it's the part you all know. But the left side of your right eye also connects to your right hemisphere, and this is called ipsilateral. And the right side of your left eye and right side of your right eye connect to the left hemisphere. Did I just blow your mind, or give you a headache? I know it's complicated, but here's an easy way to visualize it. Here are the two visual fields of your eyes. If you lose your left eye, you still maintain three quarters of your visual field because of how much your eyes overlap. Both of your hemispheres still process the information, but in most cases of visual neglect, you lose one hemisphere, which means you lose half of your entire visual field, half from each eye. So you can still physically see it, but you can't interact with or attend to any of it. So if I were to hold up two objects, you'd only be able to name one of them. And if I asked you to hold up your hand and divide your visual field in half, it would be off-center. All right, enough of the scary stuff. Let's assume everything is on, everything is working, and you can attend to all of it. But for funsies, let's take away something else. Let's take away area V5, also known as area MT. Now when I do things like this, Things just pop into existence. Congratulations, you have akinetopsia, which is the inability to perceive motion. Remember the T-Rex from Jurassic Park? Don't move. Can't see us if we don't move. Yeah, that's not true and likely not even possible, but the opposite definitely is. People with damage to area MT cannot keep track of large movements. If you're a fan of a fairly popular drug that's gaining an increasing legality, You've probably experienced this effect, where things just seem to happen in frames rather than in one fluid motion. This is partially because of the fact that it's a depressant, so it lowers your perceived frames per... You know what? Just don't do drugs, okay? Okay. So alright, let's get to something everyone can understand. In your eyes, you have cones and rods. Oh snap, it's the color episode! Finally! <laughs> Anyway, to repeat a point I've made before, if cones are the pixels in your eye, then rods are like the backlight. You can't see with only rods, because it would look something like this, which 
is terrifying. It's just the presence or absence of light, there's virtually no definition. Luckily we have cones so we don't live in that nightmarish fever dream. Most of us have three types giving us full color vision, but what if you only had one? This is called achromatopsia, which just means the lack of color vision. If you only have one cone, that doesn't mean that you're able to see in only one color. It's not monochromatic, it's achromatic. The reason night vision goggles are monochromatic is because it's a screen that's on purpose only displaying in green. You need at least two different types of cones in order to differentiate between different wavelengths of light and perceive color. If you only have one type of cone, it's just yes there is light or no there isn't. And while you could say that this is shades of gray, I really hate that that book ruined that phrase. It's not one color, it's no color. So dogs, they don't see in black and white because they have two cones. And when you have at least two, you see in color. Ferrets on the other hand are true colorblind because they only have one type of cone. Ugh, where am I? Why did he wake me up this time? Oh no, he's not talking to that stupid mechanical eyeball again. He knows it's not alive, right? Does he think it's alive? I guess he needs to practice talking to something if he ever wants to talk to a girl again. I haven't seen him talk to a girl in years. Waitly. Outside. Wait, what? <laughs> we'll go in a second. Anyway, from his perspective, he doesn't see in color because he only has one type of color. No, I, I don't think you understand. I don't want to go outside. We go through this every single time. Outside. Bath time. Well, I just had a bath. I don't want to go outside. Okay, we'll go outside, jeez. All right, I guess he... Didn't really want to go outside. Achromatopsia can also be caused by damage to area V4, which is the color center. And just like with neglect or cortical blindness, it can sometimes occur in only one hemisphere, giving you this weird half color vision. When people lose the ability to see color completely, they often fall into a deep depression and eventually end up committing suicide because of how bleak the world literally looks. Well, there's a happy thought. So let's talk about dogs, people, and color blindness. <laughs> all right, all right, easy with the effects, yeah. What just happened? Okay, nope, if this is what happens when I talk about color, forget it. So what form of blindness do you find most terrifying? Let me know down in the comments. Will the color episode be next? I don't know, so be sure to attend to that subscribe button. In the meantime, follow me on Facebook and Twitter and join the conversation on the subreddit. What's the matter, Wheatley? Come on, good boy. Nob end.